Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for chapter four tonight um, of what is it called? Trans. Trans. Um, Matt Fusari. Yeah. Okay. Return with me now to a world sometime in the near future, perhaps about 100, 120 years from now. To the story of Fran Jensen, the transgender who has recently underwent a procedure that has quite literally transformed her physically, biologically, and genetically female, although quite unable to walk in high heels, it seems. Meanwhile, Dr. Corbin, the medical genius who gave Fran, Fran her transformation, is dealing with some problems of his own. Specifically, the scientist upon whose his work whom upon his work is based, Dr. Alexander Sakowski. And we continue now on the scene with, with the in Dr. Corbin's office. A heated discussion between Alex, Dr. Alexander Sakowski, her stepdaughter, Rowan. Dr. R.J. O'Shaughnessy, and Dr. Daniel Corbin. We start off with a medium close-up of Alex. Tell me, doctor, is a person any less human because they struggle with their gender identity? I didn't say they were. R.J., will you please? And then we cut into a medium close-up of R.J. No, Daniel, I won't. When we worked together, I noticed an underlying contempt for gender dysphoria that you have. Which surprises me because of what you shared with me regarding your sister, brother. He was still male. He never had the surgery, if you remember. You treat transgenders like a disease to be cured and not as human beings. No, I don't, RJ, and I resent you throwing what happened with my brother back in my face. I think about him every day. He didn't have to die either. He's the reason I'm doing this work and refining this procedure. I'm saving transgender people from unnecessary pain and torment. For all of our advances in the past century, transgenders do not have the acceptance the way homosexuals finally do now. Transgenders are still treated like freaks and harassed. And that is wrong. And we cut to a close-up of Alex. On this we are in agreement, Doctor. But another question you need to ask yourself. Aren't you also remaking people in your image? That is to say, your image of what you feel people should be? And we cut back to Dr. Corbin, who glares... Alex, angry. No disrespect is intended, but your husband was involved in the infamous Vulcan project. I don't think you should be judging me. And we cut to RJ, who looks angry. Daniel! No, I'm saying this. You wanted to bring family into this discussion, RJ. It's hypocritical of you, both of you, to come in here and criticize what we are doing, especially after I offered you a chance, doctor, at a new life. RJ opens her mouth as if to say something, but Alex interrupts her. She looks annoyed. She holds up her palm. My husband was haunted by his actions for the remainder of his life. You remind me of him a bit. But you also remind me of someone else. If you are implying that I am anything like Richard Dyson, I'd like to be wrong in that assessment. But I followed your work and your statements to the press and now speaking to you in person. And what my stepdaughter feels notwithstanding, you trouble me, Doctor. Oh, is that why you're here? To compare me to the man who most wrecked the organics replacement industry as we know it? No. My personal views aside, there are greater issues you need to consider with the work you are doing. You are God. I don't believe in God. Maybe you should. Why? You surprise me, Doctor. 
one with your credentials believing in some deity. God is a reminder for me, for one thing, that there are things greater than us, like morality, ethics. I'll let you in on a secret. I'm not sure if what I believe is truth, at least as we humans understand it. But the message all that God offers, Christ specifically, forgiveness and loving your neighbor as yourself, that we can rise above our evil and be redeemed. This appeals to me. It gives me some peace of mind. Not me. I prefer finding my own answers based on science and reason. We don't need a God to be out there. Religion impedes our progress. If misused, yes. But it can be a force for good and when properly applied. Pope John Paul the Great, for example, in the early years of his papacy, was a contributing factor in the downfall of the Soviet Union in the late 20th century. Yeah, and that same Pope also led a church to turn a blind eye to the molestation of children. I know my history, Dr. Sikorsky. The point is, it's the tools we have at our disposal, religion or science, anything created by a human being used for good or evil. That's not what we do here, Doctor. We save lives just as you intended with your original concept. And beyond it, I might add. Alex looks at Dr. Corbin thoughtfully. She pauses a moment before she speaks. See that it stays that way. Are you, are you threatening me? I can't believe I'm... No, I'm not. I'm merely presenting you with a choice. I can be your ally or strongest opponent with the time that I have left. I don't want this technology misused. Dr. Corbin doesn't immediately answer. His cell phone vibrates. You hear the sound, sound effect of the cell phone vibrating. You'll have to excuse me, Doctor, RJ. And one second, I lost my eyes. <laughs> well, anyway. Dr. Corbin exits the office with Alex and RJ following. But the camera follows Dr. Corbin to where he's going. He goes to an elevator. He takes a floor down and goes into another patient room. The room looks very familiar, almost as if from the, same, from the first episode where we were first introduced to Fran. And as he gets closer to the bed, there appears to be a young man in it who looks very, very familiar. Well, Frankie, how are we doing today? That's not my name. What is it then? I told you my name is Fran. We're gonna have to work on it, Frankie. Cut to black end of episode four. Woo! Thanks a lot. <laughs> So, uh, will chapter five be ready in two weeks? Yep. Okay. The so two weeks, chapter five, will be waiting on bated breath. So, next up, um, Anne Marie Rowley. Yay.